how to find investors and raise venture capital and what you need to do. So hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna try and talk you through some of the key points on how you position yourself, find investors and go on to raise venture capital. And a lot of the conversations that are happening around no money down, raising investment, huge amounts by the way, with no experience behind you. I have my own beliefs, my own opinions, and I have a lot of experience working with all types of investors from private lending, equity, venture capital, that be retail investors, investors, high net worth investors, sophisticated investors, family offices and big institutions. So I feel that I have a good amount of experience to share with you. Firstly though, I'd like to debunk some of the myths that many people end up believing because there's a huge amount of marketing saying that you can raise venture capital with no experience apart from doing a two day course, three week course, whatever it might be, and you can go and connect with an investor, raise their money, their hard earned money to put into a project which you wanna go on to do, whether that's in business, you know, a startup business, or if it's to do with property. It's not that simple. And imagine if it was, a lot of people would be losing money because you can't borrow a huge amount of money, go on to a project you've never even done before or start up a business you've never really succeeded in and hope that it works out. If it's too good to be true, it normally is. And it certainly is when it comes to raising money like that. It doesn't happen. As I talk about this, I already have got a book that you can go away and read on Amazon. I'm gonna pop it up next to me. It's called How and Where to Find High Net Worth Investors with 19 Unique Methods in which I built an incredible Incredible investor network with go check it out reasonably priced and the links will also be in the description below so let's debunk those myths can you raise capital with no experience in my opinion no could it be done and possibly has it been done maybe on rare occasions you've got to think logically if you've never done it before you have no assets in the background to raise the money that you're after and you've never completed on the project that you're aiming to do why would someone lend you money hard-earned money to go on to do something you've never done before with no experience experience. It doesn't make sense. I've been in enough meetings on enough Zoom calls with family offices who are considering lending their money. It's not that easy to do. There are so many steps and it's a long process to even getting that money in the bank. So debunking that myth, it's, it's not done overnight if you've just come off a two-day course. If you don't have assets in the background, this is the other thing. A lot of people get hyped up and they get a huge amount of excitement when they come off an educational course being told that now that they have the knowledge, that they can take that to an investor who doesn't have the time to raise their money, put that into a project, they give the investor ROI, everyone's happy. It doesn't work like that. Think about it like this. If you're going to raise money, you need to leverage it against something. Business typically will require venture capital, okay? And what is venture capital? It's essentially money that an investor is willing to lose because they believe in the project. So if, if there's nothing to leverage it against, it's a huge risk for that investor. Property, for example, if someone is looking to raise money to do a property project, that individual who's looking to borrow the money has never done that project before. Typically, and a wise and a experienced investor will say, okay, cool, I'll hear your project out. What experience do you have? Very limited. Okay, not a problem. What assets in the background do you have to give me comfort that I can leverage against your assets in order to give you my money? And someone will say, well, what do you mean? Okay, well, what I'm after, you're asking for 100, 2, 3, 400, 500,000 pounds. I would like to see in the background that you have buy to lets, collectibles, expensive watches, Rolexes. Maybe you have some artwork. Do you have a holiday home that's unencumbered that I can leverage and place a charge on those assets so that I can lend you my liquid cash so you can go on to do your project. And the reason I want to leverage and use your assets as security is so I can go and allow you to use my money for a project that hopefully is gonna go well, and I really hope it does. They're never going to give you money with no assets in the background. So if you're renting a home, and you don't own it and you also own no assets, why on earth do you think someone would lend you venture capital or even money that is secured on the site alone? Because then they're hoping that you're gonna complete the project. What happens if you walk off from a new business and it becomes too hard because you've never done it before? Doing a two-day course and listening and learning about it and getting a, an exciting feeling and a dopamine hit by the trainers that have been pumping you up for two, three, four, five days a month is very different to dealing with contractors 
pushing yourself through the hard times through business, making it profitable, having the pressure of paying an investor back. That's the reality of it. So remember, raising money and working with investors, it is a myth in the image that it's very easy. It's not. Finding investors. Now, investors are absolutely everywhere. And as I mentioned in my book, if you do pick up a copy, is that you're probably living within a mile of an investor unless you're living in the absolute middle of nowhere. So investors are all around, typically in cities as well. Many of them have money to deploy, but how do you increase your chances of raising that venture capital that you so need for your project? Well, you need professionalism. You need good positioning online and offline. You need to be well-educated within the business or property project or whatever it might be that you are looking to raise capital against. You need to execute your message well, present yourself very clearly with no erms, buts when you are putting a pitch deck in front of them. You need to offer them reassurance. One of the worst things for an investor to see is the idea that someone who's raising money also has other agendas, other projects on the go. If you are lending money and you are trying to raise money, you want to know and give reassurance to that investor that this project that you're raising money for is the sole project that you want to succeed. What you don't want them knowing is you've got too many things going on. You also want to be able to explain your project very clearly in a period of time that doesn't make them question your credibility or your experience to actually getting this job done. Now, investors will also want to check in on a project. They'll want to know about it. So you should offer time schedules, how long it's for, the charges, the security that you're offering them. Everything needs to be above board and really professional. You also need to spend time building a relationship. Always pay for the coffees, go to the local cafe, have a sit down, have a meeting, have Zoom calls. Let them know that there's gonna be follow-ups, there's gonna be current updates to what's going on. Really reassure them during the relationship building phase. Now, the actual finding of investors are LinkedIn. Not so much Instagram, but definitely LinkedIn. There are business owners that are cash flowing a hell of a lot. And there are certain checks that you can do. And I do have a previous video, which um, I can include somewhere on the screen. I'll pop up the thumbnail next to me and there'll be a little link you can click. It's how to find high net worth investors on LinkedIn. I've got a whole separate video of that. But what you wanna do on LinkedIn is if you use speech marks, and I'll use a screen recording next to me. When you use speech marks and then close them off on each individual title, what it does is it filters them off on LinkedIn. So you are purely searching for those titles and you don't get any of the other riffraff on LinkedIn. And then what you wanna do is you wanna outbound to people. You wanna be very consistent with your posts on LinkedIn, that you're looking for venture capital, you have projects available all the time, that you are doing other things, that you know, let them know that you're active and then start outbounding to investors, dentists, doctors, head of IT, people who have high paying jobs. Again, a lot of information is on my previous video. These people do have cash and they may not have the time. And then you've just got to build a relationship, pop into their DM, but make it short, make it punchy, make it friendly and finish with an open question so that they come back to you. Let them know that you've been on their website. Let them know that you've read their bio and that you're interested in having a conversation. So investors are absolutely everywhere. Not so much on Instagram. I don't find there's too many investors. Start putting out some polls. Who's interested in earning ROI on their money? Who would like to know more about projects? And just start building your credibility and presence online. Hey everyone, this podcast was kindly sponsored by Shield, who helped us deliver this podcast along with all the social media that goes with it, helping us to get out to more people, which leaves us just to focus on creating more great conversations. If you want to start, delegate or optimize your social media or podcast, or even if you want to build your very own online course or program, get in touch with the team at shieldglobal.io. What to offer an investor if you want to increase your chances of raising this venture capital that you need for your new business, project, property development, whatever it might be. You really want to offer a tasty ROI, so return on investment. What are you going to offer them? Try not to think as a greedy individual. Try not to think, right, I'm going to borrow the maximum loan to value. I want all the profit with this new investor and I'm going to give them a little bit back that just beats the bank. A lot of people who train people to raise capital investments say you know, six, seven, eight percent is always better than the bank. 
I 100% agree. It's better than the bank. Anything is better than the bank. However, if you're going to work with an investor first time round, one, either try and joint venture it. So you give them a really decent amount of the profit or you give them a high percentage. And what that's going to do is that's going to one, show that you are willing to make this work on a first time basis. Just think about it logically. How hard is it to really work with a first time investor? It's really hard. You've got to gain trust, credibility, build a relationship that both of you can trust each other to get both sides of this deal done. One's going to lend and deliver the money. The other one's going to deliver the project and that you're going to have a sustainable relationship throughout without you know, falling out because when there's finances involved, things can be very tense. So you want to offer an investor a really nice amount that they feel comfortable with, especially if you do not have assets to secure their money against. If you are raising venture capital, remember that is money they are willing to lose. So offer something sufficient where they think, okay, I'm taking a bit of a risk with you. I really like you. You're a quick learner. I feel that you can execute this project, but I'm also getting a nice whack for my money. So I'm willing to take the financial risk. It wouldn't make much sense to borrow 100,000 and you offer 6% on that over a year. Which brings me on to my final point. How long should you borrow money for? I always say the safest way to borrow money from an investor is offer them a fixed return over a fixed period of time. It's a win-win. You borrow the money for X amount of time. Maybe it goes into a new SPV company, which you set up specifically for this project. Or if it's for starting up your own company, a lot of people who start their own company, it's your baby. You want to own it. And sometimes it's a bit of a struggle to have to admit you may have to give away some equity, a shareholding to a new investor because they're bringing the money, the cash injection that you need. So what you could do is you could offer a fixed ROI. I'm going to borrow 20, 30, 40, 50,000, whatever, whatever the number is. Over 18 months, I'm going to pay you back an agreed amount with a bonus if I'm able to you know, perhaps exit early or whatever it might be. I feel that it's the safest, it's the cleanest, especially when it comes to legals. There's no complications. Fixed amount for a certain period of time with an agreed return on investment, but it's got to be attractive for the investor to get involved if it's venture capital. I hope you have enjoyed this video. This is very loosely um, covered off what it's like to find investors, work with investors. I am going to include at the end of this video my uh, previous one, which was how to find investors specifically on LinkedIn. Again, all the links will be below for some further information. If you did like it, please do hit like and subscribe. And this is one of a small part series that I'm going to be talking about venture capital, finding investors and raising investment correctly, safely and the right way so that you don't make any mistakes. And I'll see you all in the next video.